All right, guys, before the show starts, did y'all buy your tickets to the live show yet? I hope y'all did because this year, June 29th at City Winery, we will be hosting our second live show, the 25 and Over Club Experience Show. Come and come out and turn up with us. We'll be me, Renee, aka, AKA Renee and Proper, and Billy the Bad Guy, Billy the Goat, Billy the Kid, Bills, Bills, Bills. You'll be able to see him and me live and watch us do our unhinged shit in person, okay? Now, you might want to hurry up and buy your tickets. And also, if you want to meet and greet us and chill, make sure you buy your VIP ticket. Hope to see everybody there. Love you guys so much. Thanks for supporting us. We love y'all. And we'll see you at the live show. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Harriet, let's show them how we do it. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. It's another episode of 25 and over, 25 and over club. Welcome to another unhinged episode of the 25 and Over Club. Mm -hmm. I'm your boy, Billy the Bad Guy, Billy the Goat, Billy the Kid. And it's me, Renee, a.k.a. Renee Proper, and you are watching another wonderful episode of the 25 and Over Club where life gets real after the age of... 25. I thought you was going to burp on the microphone. I would have walked out. That's nasty. Because anyway. I took a big gulp and I thought you was going to burp. I have class. 42% of it. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, y'all have to be here to understand that joke. That joke is really funny. <laughs> they asked how long should we set the um, timer for, and I said fifty-five minutes. So I was like, uh, um, like my school grade. I said, actually, I did receive a forty-two, and that's where Renee said that. But thank you for tuning to another great episode. We're so happy to tell y'all that we are going to do another another live show June 29th at the City Winery. You can see me and Renee. It'll be my first live show, and I'm not gonna yes. lie, I am a little nervous about what about being live in front of people, like just you know entertaining a crowd. It's one thing to talk to a camera and a few of our, you know, close team sitting here, but to talk to, entertain a, to, what they call it, work a room. It's a, in a, it's like a, what's the word, a Jillian? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this report, yo, and I tell you, his report card is showing up today. Adrillion. <laughs> the word is adrenaline. My adrenaline? <laughs> oh, Adrenaline. Adre adrenaline. Mm -hmm. The ad rush. The rush you get. adrenaline. Kicks in. Kick in. Mm -hmm. You're going to forget all about that. Because I'm like, yo, it's literally moments before the show. we like, fuck. What was that? My watch Julian. a scary movie the other day, <laughs> It's like, by the time you realize it, you're on stage. It's time to go. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm fucking him. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is the giggles. We haven't recorded in a month and a half. We have this. Yes. So we're so happy to be back. All the episodes y'all see were pre-recorded. And yes. this is the month of April. And it's my birthday month. And I'm going to be like one of those people. I don't care mm. what y'all say. You know the one of those people that's on Instagram that be like, cash at me on my birthday. Yes. Yeah, cash at me on my birthday. Ew. And sign up for Patreon for my birthday. Uh, that's cute. Sign up for Patreon for her birthday and say and make sure you buy a ticket. And shout out to some of the fans that have been reaching out to us saying they got their tickets. Because uh, um, shout out to um, Brie who bought her ticket. I was trying to find a list of people that said they bought their ticket, but I can't oh, find it. Oh, and we were discussing, not sure, we were discussing doing a raffle for two mm. tickets for this show. Uh, when we iron out all the logistics of the raffle, we would decide how we want it to go. We're going to have a great time today because guess what? We have so much to catch up on. So much It's going to be a on. great episode. So, Renee, you start with your catch up. So, my catch up is what I've been doing for the past month. The past month, I have been just... Working as usual. I know everybody gets so tired of me saying that, but just working as usual. I've not really been outside, and I'm not proud of myself about it. That's good. You're saving money. True, true. I've been saving some money. But I've not been outside. But this summer, I'm going to be on the sidewalk. Okay. I want to be on the sidewalk. I want to be outside a little, inside a little. Okay. But I've just been working. I had, like, um, for my month off, what have you done? I have been doing a lot. I would have to say... I've been distracted. Okay. 
Oh. That's a, that's a good distracted. Yeah, it's a great distracted. Mm -hmm. um, especially when it starts with dick. Um, <laughs> I've been doing everything I'm not supposed to. Whoa. <laughs> 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 Bree just zoomed the fuck in on Billy. <laughs> okay, forget it. Um, I have not been taking care of my business. Um, every day I was supposed to work on my new business. Instead, I've been going to see my nigga. I haven't been taking care of my business. I was supposed to be moving out. I was supposed to move out. Say we recorded on the 11th. I was supposed to move out March 30th. I still did not move out. So I'll be moving out. In two days, officially, I'll be going back home with my mom for a year, mm -hmm. which I'm excited about. My little brother is there, so I have somebody to show, talk shit to. It's just been a my me and my me and my yeah, me. Yeah, my me and my me. I'm upset about moving because I think about all the memories I had in that house. Like, I had so many great memories in that apartment, from the threesomes to the... I thought this nigga was going to say... Just, you know, be readjusting. How 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 do you think readjusting to... I don't um, want to readjust. Because I've been... It's the freedom of coming home, doing whatever I want. No, I can't fuck in my mother's house. And I, I wouldn't I do mean, that. I mean... I wouldn't do that, of course. Um, have you ever fucked at home? No. I ever just, since you've been... I don't even masturbate at home. Really? I don't believe... <laughs> I don't believe in masturbating in my parents' house. I just feel like. Mm -mm. So when did you start? Like as a teenager, when you started touching yourself, where did you start doing it? I got caught in a lie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because that's when I first started experiencing it. But I've moved out at seventeen, so I was okay. fucking at seventeen, and then the little time I'll go to my mother's house, I wouldn't really do it. Mm -hmm. I would go to my grandma's house, wouldn't do it. It's just something. And then I've been living on my own from twenty three, twenty four to mm -hmm. thirty, so mm -hmm. I had no problems of. Getting doing it, and but I just something about me just don't feel like ejaculating in my parents' house. You're gonna, it's gonna be different. Like, how many hands if you ejaculate at home, which in your parents' house? Wait, y'all don't ejaculate, I, yeah, I have, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm ejaculated, <laughs> well, whatever. Clap your I hands, ejaculated, if you orgasm, snuck niggas in, all types of stuff. Yeah, see, but I don't do all. that. See, my mother. I can't even see no nigga in because my mother was I remember being. I remember job. when I was like a teenager, like a teenager, and I, my mom. My mom is always. My mom is very unpredictable. She's a Gemini, of course, so she's okay, unpredictable. Jamie, so she said she was going someplace. I'm like, okay, I have a couple hours, but I'm a good. I'm, I know I study people, so I know right. how what her mannerisms are like. Okay, so I had this boy in my house, and when I tell you, my mom came up unexpectedly. I had to tuck that nigga in the closet. Yo, that reminds me. My mom used to be a foster mom, and the mm. foster kids always used to sneak the niggas in. Mm -hmm. So I used to be like, "How do y'all do it?" And one time, um, I had a foster sister. She was getting back shots, and my stepfather <laughs> opened the door. And when he opened, oh, the, opened door, the door, my stepfather uh -huh. opened the door. But how he opened the door, he couldn't see the nigga. But yes, he could have knocked. But when he knocked, she didn't answer. Mm. Probably because she was getting back shots. But so she didn't stop when she heard people come in. No, because the nigga, because where's he gonna go? So mm. she was just like, oh, and then um, he was right there. Um, my the the guy. So how my stepfather opened the door, mm -hmm. you could not see that it a was boy some, was there. Yeah. Okay. So um, but yeah, they all snuck people in. I wish I knew. So how your brother snuck. See your brother snuck girls in. Oh yeah, yeah. Are you out of one? Because yeah, I don't. Especially know. boys, and I've been snuck in. Like I've been with guys like in my young years, where they snuck you into their house. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. And See, you know the mom's room is always closest to the front. Oh, So God. you have to always tiptoe past the mother. See, I never had to get snuck in because I always messed with older niggas that lived with their mother. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Wait, older niggas that live with their but, mother? No, sorry. <laughs> but I didn't want to... I never... I, they, they could let me in freely because I dealt with niggas, dealt with niggas like that... that's my homeboy. Yeah, that, Okay. Or even to have a good relationship with their mother. Okay. But I don't even let my... I want my mother to believe to this day I'm still a virgin. Yeah. And how you going to tell me I'm not? I can't be she pregnant. She watches the show. She, no, she don't. She don't watch it? Hey, no. Ooh, it's not Patreon, Bilal. <laughs> okay. I'm working on... My nigga told me that I do not need... Our relationship is not for content-based purposes. I guess. But let me but tell you... But the last ones are... Yeah, let me tell you. I, um, no, ooh, not that one. I, had a story, I have a story for when a guy said like this. But me and his mom was cool when I said that. This was like when I just graduated high school. Me mm -hmm. and this guy was like together. So I used to go to his house 
Like every Saturday, every Saturday, I ain't miss a beat. Sometimes after school on Friday. But me and his mom used to be so cool. She knew she, her son was fucking. She was like, at least I, I know the girl, whatever. She knew. I know she knew. She was like, don't do anything and whatever. She was like, I know you guys. I know you guys are good kids or whatever. She used to give him like she had mad respect for him. So she used to give him privacy. He had his own room. Always did. She thought we was just in there playing video games. I don't even know how to play video games, miss. So he's one, playing games, all right. <laughs> so one day. She went to she she went out like she went on a long like a like when she went to a resort and a couple for the weekend she went away for the weekend she knew I was there she made sure I came before she left so she knew I was safe and she left but his aunt came and me and this boy was putting down some Olympic type of fucking oh the marathon this is it was, Jamaica yeah marathon fucking all day all afternoon uh-huh. long and his aunt gonna bust in the room and what position was you in? I was riding. <laughs> oh, if you see, that's not what's so bad position to get caught in. All of them <laughs> sucking dick, maybe. I wouldn't get caught. Nah, well, I'd rather be- get caught sucking dick because it's like, all right, like Miss Miss Johnson, you never got caught sucking dick, Miss <laughs> Johnson. I know you suck dick before. I think for me, for me, getting caught sucking, doing oral. Would be I don't want to get caught in missionary because I'm vulnerable. <laughs> Imagine me getting caught like this. But her, so her back, the back was turned. Her, her, my back was to the door. So this was the door, and this was me. <laughs> and your titties just out? I, no, my titties was pointing this way to him, but she opened the door. She was like, "Oh, I'm gonna call your mother to him." He, she, he was like, "Call her. She knows she's here." And she did, and she cursed her sister out. Why you invaded his privacy? They're over eighteen. See, I love I her can't to this fuck, day. Cause I'm loud. You I'm were very kids. Loud. You wasn't. You wasn't. Really, oh, but yeah, when you when you sneak in, you know how to be 18, quiet. So it's like you're not that sexually. You still in your. Mm, mm, I can't. I face. can't find myself fucking in my mother's house as much as I want to. I can't. But then old babe hit me up recently, mm. and he tried to come see me, but I said no. Okay. And he was like, "I want to fuck. I want to fucking see you. I want to be with you. You don't love that nigga." And I said, "Nigga." Don't you have a nigga? He said, yeah. I said, and it's okay for me to talk about this. I okay. Spoke, yeah. You got permission? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not so much permission, but I spoke to him. I'm not okay. lying okay. about anything anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this was him with his hands behind his back like this. Wait, I'm not I, lying I tried not to anymore. scratch my head. <laughs> yeah, I'm not lying. He did. I'm not lying anymore. But um yeah, so the nigga he basically told me like you don't really like that nigga, you don't want to be with him. I'm like, bro, you have a whole nigga. Like, why would I leave where I'm happy at mm-hmm. to be with somebody that has a man? She, you told me you cheated on your man a few times, and now you want to cheat on your man with me. When you gonna leave him? I'm gonna leave him real fast. I said, I have, I'm happy where I'm at. But why I, y'all still talking? Because I had well my 13 days, my 45 days in. Tomorrow. This is a long ass 45 days. My 45 days in tomorrow. Y'all really did that for real? No. <laughs> I said, like, y'all really sucked to this 45 day thing? Oh, for me, yeah, because I told me you have 45 days. But I didn't really do nothing with nobody because I love my man so much. Period. Yeah. Oh, and bitch, this is probably going to be page. This is not Patreon T because we don't have to tell them to record Patreon. <laughs> Might as well give them their money's worth here. <laughs> so. Somebody gonna hit my phone up. Mm-hmm. I'll do it on Patreon. All right. I can't. Because I don't okay. want to get no more. Right. We're gonna, right. we we gonna roll through these topics. All right. So, yes. so we we in single marriage situation ship, right? So the first topic of this, if you witness your best friend's spouse cheating, will you tell your best friend? How do you feel about that? Oh, if I witness my best friend's spouse cheating, will I tell my best friend? Would you want me to tell you? Of course. I'm gonna tell you, but I'm gonna make sure I have proof first. I'm gonna make sure I have. But in the but we said you you already know you already established that okay he's out with somebody like she. It's not just somebody's just there talking to like you're they're doing things that you know okay they're in they're involved in something kissing touching in a certain kind of way. I have to have proof before I tell you. What what kind of proof? What kind of proof? I need hardcore evidence because if you're gonna tell me my nigga she on me, you need hardcore evidence to show me my nigga she on me. You need to show me. Where he was at, you need to show yeah, me. Yeah, but in, in in modern day times, people are gonna have phones and have it recorded. Right, but you just can't come to me and say your man is cheating on you because he talks to, um, Justin. 
All right, so would you want that, like, in your friendships? You, you, are you going to, would you, do you establish that? Like, look, if you see my nigga out somewhere, don't tell me. No, tell me so I could kill him. But well, you said that you had to come with our You have to, you can't just say, I seen him with somebody at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. It looked very intimate. Mm -hmm. Did you take a picture? I believe, for me, I would want them to tell me and I would decipher if I would bring it up or not. Because I have that level of control. Right. Some people don't. They're going to blow up. And I'm going to wait a little bit. I'm going to wait until... because. But that's just me. Not everybody's going to... I'm saying, but... This is why I want the proof. I want the proof because now, once you told me, I seen I seen you, um, your man at a restaurant with this nigga, and now I go to my man, mm -hmm. and I say, Renee said she seen you at a restaurant with a nigga. Because I'm going to call names. Yeah. <laughs> I'm and you can not ask my friend. You cannot tell me. Don't tell him I told you. Okay, I won't tell him. Renee said she yeah. saw you at this restaurant with this nigga. First of all, in that situation, I would make my presence known. I'm going to say hi to him or her or whoever. I'm going to be like, yes. hey. So it's up to you. If they jump up and be like, oh, this is just my... You know, so sometimes they do that. Um, Have I ever been in that situation? I've seen like stuff on the internet, but... And I've I've seen stuff on the internet and I haven't said anything. I've seen okay. stuff because again, that's just you know what I'm saying. Right. But I'm not gonna lie, I have like sent over stuff and then like listen. Or I've seen friends of mine in other bitches like comments, like man, heart eyes. I'm like, see, no, but again, well, I, I would ask my, I would have to know my friend to say if you want me to tell you or not because I don't want you to tell me again because I'm gonna tell that nigga something and now he's gonna look at you as look at this bitch with the that like. Now he he's not gonna you're like you now, and now you can't be around him because he gonna feel like you're an op, and then he can't be around you because he gonna be like. Bitch, so you're basically saying you don't want to know because you're not breaking I need up with your stone nigga. Stone cold proof. Even if you do, you might not still not break up with him. I had I a might friend. Still we was doing something, and we was doing something important. She was like, "Well, I'll hold on." She was getting a Facetime call, mm -hmm. right? And when she was getting a Facetime call, someone Facetime her. And was like, isn't this your man? And he was out on a date with another bitch. That's the kind of proof I need. Okay. I want that proof. But trust me, sometimes you have to be careful with it because I've seen girls get proof, get everything they need, and be like, this bitch is just hating on me. She didn't have to show me no, that. But the proof, no, but the proof is in the pudding. I can't be delusional. I can't go for he said, she said. Mm -hmm. Right, I can't go off of that because then he, you give him an opportunity to flip whatever he wants mm -hmm, to flip. Mm -hmm. I went to eat with my coworker. That's all that was at Ruth Chris. Mm -hmm. And I know you paid. And you paying for motherfuckers? That's why I draw the line. If this bitch come to me and talk about you gave us some money, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> bitch. <laughs> so yeah, that um, that's that's a no, 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 no for me because it's just like I. I Tell me with proof. Will I tell my friend? I have to know my friend to know. So will and you it's, be it's, a friend that you're gonna go to them with hardcore proof? Yeah. Would you be mad if I if I knew but didn't have proof and didn't tell you? Yeah. I'm gonna be mad either way. It doesn't matter. At me if I tell you or not? I don't care if you heard it from somebody that told somebody to tell me. I'm not winning. Oh wait, you're gonna I be mad. I wanna know no matter what you hear, no matter okay. how much evidence you have, I wanna know. I can decide whether I bring it up or not because I have that type of control. Okay. I I'm gonna know. I'm not gonna bring that up because I don't got no proof. But if it's real, some real shit, yeah, of course I'm gonna bring it to him. And you gotta know how to tell me too. You I'm gotta... not, but I'm not. I'm I'm. I don't. Know, I think I'm lying about calling names. I might not call names. I, I don't know until a minute. Because first of all, I need I need the evidence to build. That's why I don't say nothing the first time. Only if it's like some real shit. Like yeah, but I'm very impulsive. I react. I'm too not. Quick. I'm not. Because I can't. Ha I can't be like, all right, let's go to bed, and then he be like, good night. Actually, Renee told me. No, that would be like that. When it's on my chest, I gotta cough it up. Like, I'm not what? like. Well, I'm not like you that. Can... I, I I drink my tea cold, like cold. I let that shit marinate. Clap your hands if you want your friend to tell you. If your friend tells you that they caught your man cheating, do you need evidence? Clap your hands. Yeah. You need evidence. Well, and anything somebody does, you need evidence. So if there's no evidence, do you still want them to tell you? Yeah, no, I know. No? Yeah. Clap your hands if you want evidence. Don't clap your hands if you want me to tell you. Shall I tell you? Why do you want me to tell you? 
Okay, well, we have. <laughs> and I still want to know. Because, all right, because in a, in a past life, not anymore, let me put that in a past life, I want to know because in a past life, you know my motto, if you razzle, I'm a dazzle. You know I'm about to, are we both outside? You a cheetah? You a cheetah? I'm a cheetah with cheetah girls. So you... <laughs> <laughs> with cheetah girls, cheetah sisters. So you sisters. come to me. So you would tell me, if you see my nigga, you going to come tell me? Yeah. How would you tell me? Because you know, with me, I'm crazy. First so, of all, again, like I said, I am a very thorough individual. So you would watch I'm how not you tell gonna, me. I'm watch. No, I'm going to wait. And I'm going to make sure I have evidence before I come to you. But I'm coming to you. Or maybe I'm the kind of person that need evidence because... Maybe I'm just because once you tell me I'm reacting. To who? Like you going? Would you? Would you? Will you be mad though? You'll be mad at your friend. Like they. Let me tell you how I'm not reacting. Because remember the situation that happened the other day when um. No, you're not gonna remember nothing. That's true. When (laughs) um. What do you call this man? What she call him? Hernia. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hernia. Mr. Hernia. Heard something. Yeah. And. You and I, he came back and told me what he heard. Yeah, and he was like, "Don't tell your nigga." Mm-hmm. And two minutes later, what I do? Told your nigga. Because if I hate it, I got, I got to address it right away. Mm-hmm. All right, so yeah, that's that was. So you want to be told? I want to be Evidence told because I can know how to. So I know how to move. <laughs> okay. I want to know how to move. I don't want to be blindsided. But what if your friend is wrong or made something up? Like I said, I wait until I have everything I need before I present my So is case. that when you go in, your phone, in the phone? I don't go through phones. Things are going to come out the way they're supposed to. Do you, do you ever, like, get your lick, just in, uh, uh, just in case lick? I would never admit that on camera. <laughs> <laughs> and you shouldn't. <laughs> and you shouldn't. <laughs> this nigga going to ask me if I ever got my lick back. I'm a G. I would never admit that on camera. Right. I'm gonna go to the fuck buddy segment. I've never done that though. So the fuck buddy segment is how much um, minutes we have? Huh? How much minutes we got? Thirty one. Left? Yeah. Damn. The fuck buddy segment is where we talk about wild fetishes that you never heard of, right? So the next one is called one of the fetishes are called infant illism. Well, we gonna need we gonna need a moderator yes. for this. All right, infant no. illism is not infantilism. to be infantilism. Infantilism. That's the actual word. The one he said, I don't know. Infantilism. Infantilism. So infantilism is not to be confused with pedophilia, paraphernalic, infa, infa, infantilism is people who are aroused by wearing diapers, acting like babies, being treated like babies, otherwise returning to a childlike state, often in conjunction with someone else being parent-like toward them. I've seen that before. Not personally, but I've seen it on TV and stuff. Yeah, I've seen it on TV. Mm, I've never seen yeah, it Yeah, that's not that. I'm not down for that. Okay. I'm not down for that. The next one is, since you know the, um, a, since you miss Akila, little miss Akila in the B. Nasophilia. Nasophilia. I can read it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why is my job calling? My boss. You want to answer yeah, and this up? I'm good. How are you? Um, it was busy. It was really, really busy. <laughs> but I'm about to go. I'm about to go on the ground. Can I call you back? Okay, no problem. Doo-doo. Everything's okay. You heard me. Doo doo. Doo doo. Hear me. Are we gonna okay. sell? This is me. Doo <laughs> doo. Right. All right. So the this next um fetish is the human nose beyond its capacity for smelling certain scents doesn't play a huge role in the set. Wait, the human nose beyond its capacity for smelling certain scents does not play a huge role in sex for most people, unless you're a nasal nasophile. Nasophile. Then you might hanker for nasal nasolingus or the act of sucking. On a person's nose, and if you're trying to suck suck the snot out, you might be a mucophile or someone who's aroused by mucus. People have done that to ba- <laughs> the only time I've even heard any of that. Caribbean people do that to babies yeah. when they're congested. They they oh, yeah, suck yeah, yeah. the mucus out of the baby's nose. I love picking a baby's nose. Well, when I was young, I used to love picking my little brother's. Yeah, it tells you not to do that. You can suffocate the baby. Oh, then you have the you have the little, the little thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love them. So you might be a nasophilia. 
Yeah. I'm not. I, I would are have to be imagine? aroused by that. I wasn't aren't aroused. You, aren't you, aren't you? That's my little brother. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. 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 I'm playing. No. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> the next one is. Come try this one. Break the words up. <laughs> Eat that pizza. Teratophilia. <laughs> Philia. Mm-hmm. If you're a teratophilia, a you're teratophile. A teratophile. <laughs> Bitch. Right. That's that is Toronto Soros. If right. you're a teratophile, ter- you're attracted to people who are considered not just ugly but hideous, deformed, deformed or, or monstrous. monstrous. <laughs> which, first of all, is very shallow in a certain way. But second of all, at least <laughs> they're really someone <laughs> Yo, this is real. Um, Some people that are attracted to extremely unattractive ugly, people, like yeah. Quasimodo, I, I, like Hunchback of Notre Dame, like ugly. Platypus. Platypus. <laughs> All right. So this next one. So if you're attracted to guys, like every time you find yourself in a relationship with somebody that's really unattractive, ugly. maybe you are a teratophilia. Yeah. Filiac. Yep. Does it matter? You're a teratophiliac that <laughs> like that. money. At that. At that. All right, so the next one is a little controversial. Mm. This one is necrophilia. This one is a toughie. Say it with me now. Dead people are not sex objects. <laughs> if you find them arousing, you are going to have to accept that you can't actually have sex with a corpse. Just fantasize about it and leave it at that. This also goes for people aroused by dead animals. For the right price of 5K, which is one of these four kinds of... You um, which one would you try? No, well, five thousand. For five thousand, I think I could go with a teratophilia. Yeah, I could be a teratophilia. Yeah, yeah, I, I can suck a nostril. No, that's 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 mucophilia. Yeah, that's yeah. mesophilia. Yeah, I don't want anything infant. I'm not sucking a not the snot out of no grown man nose. <laughs> you must be <laughs> mad. <laughs> No, I can fuck ugly person. I've done fucked ugly people before. <laughs> I think, um, yeah. but I don't know. Here's how it's ugly. No, remember that. Remember they said <laughs> not just ugly, monstrous, like <laughs> deformed, like oh, so like people who. No, all right, don't I don't. Get... All right, I true, I true, I true. Forget <laughs> it, forget it. But y'all know what I mean. Yo, y'all know what I mean. Like people who get in relationships with. Yeah. Tara, Renee, you still on the camera, bro? <laughs> like. You are seen. You don't know what them don't know what that mean. <laughs> what does it mean then? But not say it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but yeah. necrophilia, let's keep it put out. Necrophilia is illegal. If you fuck a corpse, you will go to jail. Yeah, do not do that. Do not do that. And if you get aroused, I guess getting aroused by them or is not illegal, but it's sick and twisted. But who, people, there's articles where people were fucking corpse. I just want y'all to know that's right. And they went to jail, Billy. They got locked up. Is that right? They don't get caught. Yeah, you get you with yeah. it is a that is a, illegal in every single. You state. saw the girl that um threw her her man was arguing. She so he she threw her man's mother's ashes into the water. Is that an act of? Is that? No, that's act of toxic. Yeah, but is that no? I'm I'm trying to figure out like does she do time for that? Yeah, that's a crime. To throw Messing away ashes. Corpse. corpse. To throw just just to throw some ashes. Renee, in the it's a person. It's not actually. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was. Well, it's a double it. homicide. <laughs> no, 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 for real. No, I'm doing no for educational purposes. I really want to know. It's yeah. I'm, okay, so it, okay, uh, yeah, okay. Thank you, Gabby. Billy's no, I'm gonna look it up. Is it a crime? Is it? Yes. Yeah. Why do y'all Google it? Is it to illegal to mess? No. With ashes. people, dead ash, dead people ashes. Well, who was ashes? Would you do? You, yeah, I think I'm cremating my parents. I don't know how to spell ashes because I wrote asses. <laughs> asses. Yo. But yeah, there's all uh, there's all types of isms and schisms in the world that people do. You know, we're not judging anyone. Just slightly, ever so slightly, I'm judging. I'll be lying if I'm not. Yeah, there's a federal crime. <laughs> it's a fe- state and federal laws for it, scattering ashes. Scattering? Scattering? I don't know. Just don't don't, don't touch mess with people's ashes. ashes or dead bodies. At all. 
All right. So we're going to ease on down, ease on down the road. So I would like after 25. Life after 25. And we're going to talk about workplace romance because work I'm a workplace hoe. Hoes. Well, former workplace hoe. Okay. A reformed this... hoe. Yeah. I'm married now. Yeah, my man, my man, my man. My man, my man, my... I didn't know that came from said, Miami. Your man left you for dead, hoe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So... So as you know, we did an episode on horrible decisions yes. about workplace romance, and Shout out we to never them. talked about it here, right? So I do want to say, workplace romance. You participated in it, yeah, very many, many moons ago. But it wasn't, it wasn't a romance. It was like a fling. I'm convinced that I don't want none of my niggas to have a job. Well, none of my niggas. I don't want my niggas to have a job because I see what goes on in the workplace romance. Everybody cheat with somebody at work. I'm going to get into that later in the script because I see the cheaterization that happens at work. I don't think everybody cheats because you're saying it's it like It's a grown single- man at work who's married to his wife and a wo- grown woman at work that's married to her husband. And they, he be letting that lady grab his dick at work. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Allegedly. <laughs> and I'd be like, bro, yeah, like, does your wife know this is what you here doing during Ramadan? <laughs> it's too specific, too mm. specific. During Passover? Yeah. <laughs> Get Yo, passed over, all right. Right. So, what, what are, some people are against it. Clap right. your hands if you're for it. If you, if yes, you believe in I romance. do. I am for it only because. It's some. It's a part of society that we cannot escape. Just like school and workplace, you spend most of your life there. A lot of long relationships have met up at people you've worked with. A secretary and a the guy in, in finance. You you fucking the accountant. Some only. It's only wrong if you both have y'all persons at home or y'all spouses at home. But if y'all both two single people and y'all moving between the company guidelines, I'm saying go ahead and do your thing. So benefits of it is that, yes, you can meet a lifelong partner at work. I agree with that. You can. You can meet a lifelong partner within certain guidelines. And your job, of course, most jobs are going to say no fraternization and nothing like that. But, you know, if you guys be careful and you guys are serious about what y'all trying to pursue at the you met at work. So, you know what I'm saying? Don't be fucking in them people place. I feel like I... I think a benefit is if y'all both on break together, you could get a, a quick nut in the bathroom. We are trying to be serious here. That is serious. Getting a nut on break is serious? You never seen your nigga at work and be like... I've never worked a with a nigga. Oh. I heard... Well, I fucked in the walk-in before. Mm-hmm. Not this current job, but I mm-hmm. fucked in the freezer before. Mm-hmm. Well, I sucked dick in the freezer. Mm-hmm. I fucked in... Sometimes it's a turn on. I guess, but I'm but just that's all right. That's that's just the joking part. But the it's true too. Of having, like, are we talking about a romance or just like a work bay? I'm talking about a real bay. But do you be, would you allow your man to have a work husband? No. Why would I do such? Everybody a thing? got a work husband, work wife at home. At, at job. Why? I don't know. I think people do that for play play. I don't think they dead ass. Serious. Let me tell you how it starts. When it's a when I say a work husband, it would be like okay, I have like a a, a a cool buddy at work. Like when we first started working together, you were you were gay and I'm straight. So it was like I could be like, oh, that's my gay husband, or that's. What my... you're saying? That's my gay husband. Let your let your friend let your man come home and be like, my work wife is so funny. Why would you even be disrespecting me calling the lady your wife? But it's just a friend at work. Why? But then she's a friend at work. You're you're taking it a step further by calling her a work wife. That means you see us more than a friend. And now you're gonna see me as a fellow. Let me tell you how work relationships. <laughs> 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 Let me tell you how work relationships start. And I'm gonna use mines. Not even so much mines, but this is how they always start. It always starts with food. How many? Twenty. Starts with you with food. It, it always starts with food. I remember when Torres asked me, he was like, "I was like, yo, you buying my lunch today?" He was like... Is that how you flirt with people? Yeah. Food always brings people together. I said, yeah. And a no, party. I asked him, you buy my lunch today? He said, why I got to buy your lunch? I said, because... Um, no. I said, you buy my lunch? He said, no, are you going to buy my lunch? I said, I don't buy a niggas lunch unless they my man. So I don't know where we went from there, but it always starts with going on break together every single time. Then y'all hate the same job. So then y'all just start talking shit about the job. Now y'all both get up at 3.30. Now y'all both walking to the train, riding the same train home, having conversations, get drinks. getting drinks mm. after work. And then you, you get you get you're being vulnerable and opening, like, oh, this is going on at work. And I mean at we home. We should hang out. Let's yeah, we should hang out. And now you bouncing up and down some dick. Right. <laughs> bounce up and down some dick. So I do think the benefits is you, you could potentially meet your soulmate 
if you're single. Right, if you're right? single. If yeah. you're single. But um the second benefit, oh no, the second the second one we want to touch on with workplace hoes is what are some of the potential potential risks with workplace romance, including conflict of interest and sexual harassment? Um, so conflict um conflict of interest. Mm-hmm. I don't think Renee has ever forgiven me when I promoted my nigga at this time to be assistant manager and he was not qualified. Uh, th- I, and I've not. And I don't think I ever will. Why? Because why would you do that? I was fucking him. Do you think that's a great excuse? Yeah. I wanted my man to get some more money. And he still didn't pay for shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it definitely is conflict of interest. I know when I was fucking with um my nigga, like, you, I can't tell my I nigga. I mean, don't get me wrong. I was doing my thing. I was hustling, but still, because so, you know, it. Well, you know what? Confession. It worked to my benefit because he was so lazy that I was be able to. I, I was able to do my thing. Because he was so fucking. It was lazy. Like he was like he thought he was such a big boss. Didn't want to count the registers. Didn't want to clean up. Didn't want to close. I close all right. Interesting. <laughs> Close out my savings. Bring right the right up. <laughs> I don't want that place is closed. Ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think some of the potential risk is, especially for me as a manager, always talking with my team members, you have to the risk for me was always making sure people would shut the fuck. Yes, I or it. not in your business. Not people in that, your business. Yeah, to use it against you, or if it's yes. if it's against if it's a real. I know a lot of it's against company policy, but a lot of companies, believe it or not, they don't enforce it. Exactly. So, um, you you don't want a lot of people in your business. They could potentially use it against you to get you fired. If they know you have a spouse, if they know you have a girlfriend, they could also. That's you know, the first thing I asked Doris. Yeah, yeah. I was like, "Can I trust you?" He said, "Can you trust yourself?" Ooh. But and I can't. I couldn't because it. God bless, bless you. you. Um, I can't help. If you know me, I think my man looks so good. So mm-hmm. when I look at him, I'm, my mouth is always watering when I see him. So I'm always distracted mm-hmm. by him. I can never get nothing done. Okay. I'm coming late mm-hmm. to work. Like I like oh. And it, and it I, mess, I believe it messes mood. with people's mood. Like even your work bestie. Like you come to work and don't see your work bestie, you be a little annoyed. Like mm, I don't. And wanna... then when we have arguments, we taking that shit out of work. And oh. now, or if like. You know, tourists, they want you to be on their body when it's time to apologize. So now I'm apologizing to you, mm-hmm. trying to get your attention, but the store's on fire. Fuck like, them. My fuck man them. not talking My to me. My man not talking to me. <laughs> we arguing at work. Now everybody's looking out. Everybody's in our business. You know? So then you get an HR phone call saying, oh, Billy. We're I, getting um, complaints we, that, yeah. That you're messing with this team member. And I'm like, no. I remember when we first started fucking with each other. And this is like the first three months. And I went on a cruise and I was going that week. And he went away on his own trip, but mm-hmm. he was going for a week. And I came back to HR asking me, y'all was on the cruise together. I said, I have a tan. That nigga do not. We was not together. They was like, oh, when well, people are saying y'all mess around. How? Right. So make sure your work bay or your work, your potential work boo knows how to sh- keep their mouth shut. You know what I'm saying? Do your thing. Everybody's growing and we can't tell everybody what we can. We're not going to be able to tell nobody what to do because we've done these things. I have done it safely. I've never like, I'm a G before anything yeah. else. So I barely even spoke to the person I was messing with at the job at the time. We barely, we didn't work the same shift. So it was really easy. Mm-hmm. But we had the same days off. So, <laughs> so yeah. we had a relationship outside of work. So, but it, it still, it, I still met you here. So it's still a work. Right. But we never, we didn't need to because we were single. So, I didn't need to wait until I come to work to see you. So, no, I mean, I was, ooh, my nigga, he would come to work so and you late. You and them beefing, so you call out on their shift. And if and if it's the person you're messing with is your manager or your superior, and then the person you messing with is below you, so you let them get away with shit because it's. I know my homeboy. He don't watch the show, but I can talk about it. His he has a whole wife and everything. Mm-hmm. He was fucking with one of the employees, but the girl wasn't coming to work, mm-hmm. and he had to give, and he didn't want to fuck with her no more, so he had to give her hush money. So she was like, I'm not coming to work for three weeks, so you got to pay me for the three weeks. My type of and bitch. And he was clocking her. So she her blackmailed and, him. Blackmailed My him. My girl. And then the ex-boyfriend worked there. The ex-boyfriend found out, reported to HR, Clippiana. The, the, other, the guy got Clippiana. Yep. And the girl got Clippiana. The girl got her job, because you, I never... You paid me. I never oh. told you to pay me. Okay. I mean, okay. I I never held a gun to your head and paid me. 
But yeah, you gotta be careful with blackmailing when um you're a manager sleeping with um someone under you, literally. <laughs> um, what other pretend- sexual harassment? Sexual harassment. Sexual harassment. Yeah, because- texting to you like texting your coworkers outside of work on un- unrelated work conversation. Um, very risque conversation, saying things, saying little flirty things that's like you know dropping little mm-hmm. hints being you know freaky jokes and stuff like that that can be considered sexual harassment but y'all people be thinking it's flirting clap your hands if you ever had a workplace romance y'all don't know what y'all missing over there ain't nobody uh, well, in a romance ain't nobody with in my fucking <laughs> at all ain't nobody in a romance with exactly um, so let's share some stats. So some stats that we saw online was one in five employees cheat on their partner with a colleague. 85%... That's a very high percentage. Yeah. Let's, you want to hear that again? One in every five employees cheat on their partners with a colleague. 85% of affairs outside of a marriage start in the office slash workplace romance. Wait. In the office, workplace romance statistics show, statistics shows. The hospitality industry has the highest percentage of office romance, office romances, workplace affairs. Um, let me Statistics do that again. of 20, okay. The hospitality industry has the highest percentage of office romances, workplace affairs statistics show for 2021 indicates. 58% of employees in 2019 survey have had the Romantic, romantic relationship, relationship with, with a co-worker. co-worker. Right. So this is common. Like people working in your job, they put these things in place, I believe, to not let it go get out of hand. Yeah. But however, they do, for, for the most part, workplaces don't enforce this rule. As long as y'all know how to keep it G, like I said, y'all should be able to be cool. Well, and again, nobody's, his, your baby mama not rolling up to the job to fight me. The key your, word. To, yeah. Is that's where the most affairs happen. Yes. Because you're in each other's faces. Y'all are entertaining each other. You come y'all in there smiling. talking about your... Per- I don't want my nigga to work. <laughs> you come to work talking about your, your baby mama. So your workplace wife want to comfort you. And like, oh, let's have lunch. And next thing you know, she she messing with you. You buying her lunch. These affairs are so real. I remember working at McDonald's. And the manager is pregnant by the team member. Yo, that and was they, crazy. And the nigga yeah, was married. Yeah, that was real. That was real. The that nigga was, was married. He was married. And they used to, mind you, she was a mean ass she manager. Was a mean, I'm at, but she was But no matter how, yo, no matter how much, how slow it was, this nigga will always have hours. Always hours. 40, 45, 50 hours. Everybody getting 15, 20. Everybody and getting she made 15, the schedule. 20. She made the schedule and he always worked. And she, my, I think, but he was older than her. Yep. But he was new at the time, but she fucked him and pregnant with the with the employees baby. And, and then cause why and that wasn't the first time because she her too. He pregnant her too? No, 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 no. It, it was a different situation. Oh, oh yeah. Ellie, Ellie's friend. Um you, you know that girl, right? Uh-huh. She was pregnant by a team member too. The boy the, her baby father was one of the team members. <sighs> This is why my nigga can't have a job. So he got pregnant by her. Mind Maybe you, you should work with a, a job that's no, no, like the DMV. Work work from home. The DMV. The DMV. Is, the DMV no, because you can still sleep. No, with ain't no sexual tension in the Brown. DMV. Yes, yes there is. There ain't you no can sexual still sleep tension. With Mr. Brown. I don't know when Mr. last Brown? y'all been to the DMV or the post office. When I tell you, the moment you walk in there, your shit dry up. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't no. I know they're not. They're not even fucking. <laughs> They're not even fucking their own relationships Listen, dealing on each other. Even in my workplace now, I know niggas that have baby mothers fucking on people in there, bro. I know bitches who had niggas mm-hmm. who had a nigga fucking on the, the niggas next on the barista, job. bro. Like, mm-hmm. it is... I be like, yo, y'all partners do not know what y'all be coming here for. Y'all be you acting like y'all so work. tired. No, you tired for riding dick in the bathroom, bro. Like... That's why I don't fuck with it. I'm not I, never really I, see see, I never really um had a situation where it happened. I never caught saw anybody really. You saw a little kissing and smooching every now and then, but I never saw anything. Kissing and smooching when you have a nigga? <laughs> kissing, kissing and smooching when you razzle? I'm a... Dazzle. Yo, and it all... Yo, that's why I'm like, these niggas... Is, this lady is 69 years old. 60... <laughs> oh. <laughs> and she messed with that 50-year-old nigga. And she grabbing his dick at work, and he has a wife, and she has a husband. Something not right in the water. At that age, they don't care. Why not? Because it's like they're like, we already together. Like we not breaking up. Like go out and go. go oh, so at, at, at fifty, you gonna be grabbing another man's dick at work? <laughs> at that age, I won't be working. 
I ain't mad men to that. Shit. <laughs> she, she shouldn't be working at 69. But yeah, that's why I'm just like, yo, it happens. Every single job, somebody yeah, is fucking someone else. Yeah, but what if somebody could say to you, you have, you have a track record of hooking up with guys at the job. You think somebody said, oh, I'm not messing with you because you be hooking up with niggas at the job. So you got to give them the same benefit of the doubt. Talk about you don't want your nigga to work. I used to <laughs> hook up at work. Right, you have and I can trust myself to no longer be a hoe. Right, can and I? they never yeah. did it before. So why you was like, I don't want my nigga to work, but they've never done it because you the first then, person they did they it with. They be at work crying like, oh my man broke up with me because he found out I was fucking up with this fucking with this person at work. Bitch, you're not supposed to be fucking with nobody at work. So what are you crying for? Right, then you got to come to work. Yeah, and, see them. and now like no one. Everybody just keep your dick in your pants because my niggas don't dance and we just do the rock away. <laughs> Dance, keep your dick in your pants and, and do, do the, the rock, rock away. Hey, now cheat back. Mm. Cheat back. Mm. Cheat back. Mm. Cheat back. So some jobs <laughs> do have no dating policies. Mm-hmm. And the example is anti-dating policies can permit date permit dating by coworkers, but prohibit managers like direct reports from dating. Companies um adopting, adopting anti-dating should distribute the policy in their code of conduct or employee handbook, and they should regularly remind employees of the policy. So I know at um, Facebook, um, com- Facebook, it was, who else? Netflix and another company where they can only shoot their shot at a co-worker one time. After you shoot the shot and the person say yes or no, you cannot try and date anybody else in the company your whole time working there. What? Yes. I, they, they, I, I'm shocked that they let you shoot your shot. Right. So. Because people going to do it anyway. Amen. Right. Amen. Because I'm a, what you going to do when he shoot inside of me? You know what? All right. So this, this, in, in ending out this topic, what kind of advice can you provide to individuals who are considering dating in the workplace? You see. Don't make it hot. Yeah, true. Keep it G. Don't that is it the hot. that I is my motto hot. for this topic. Be a G at all times. And G moves in silence like the G in lasagna. That's a little Wayne line. I didn't make that up. I'm not gonna take that for myself. But that's I'm a, actually that, pissed off. Why? Because that's so fucking retarded. It's not retarded because the G in lasagna is silent. I think, yeah, keep it G, move in silence like lasagna, and mm-hmm. also like be single when you do it. Be single. Be, be single. single. And make sure the person you're messing with is single. And make sure you confirm that they're single. Because people come to work, as soon as they get on that train and swipe their metric card, they're his single. his wife came to the job. See that? Remember? Yeah. Oh, the wife yeah. Came to the job. And she called down and was like, oh, I'm going to kick that yep. baby out your stomach. She said, I'm going to kick the baby out your stomach. Mm-hmm. Yo, she had chicken nuggets in her uterus. <laughs> okay? She had some mac sauce in her pussy. But um yeah, I would say definitely keep it silent. Don't really tell nobody. Don't make it hot. And it's so hard. And the fun fact in Obsession, Beyonce was um old boys. You could you could come up in the world because in Obsession she was his secretary. Then she became his wife and his first mm. lady. In Obsession, yeah, she was she was Idris Elba. I don't remember his, his name in the movie. She was his secretary, and sis got wifed mm. up and and had his baby and was a stay at home mom. So, you know, date with a, you know, do it with a purpose. If you're going to do it, do like that. Date a CEO or somebody. Don't be fucking a nigga in the... I had a friend who's um, gay and he was fucking a Chipotle CEO. Ooh, allegedly. Ooh, allegedly. Allegedly. Now allegedly. you talking. He was a sugar daddy. See that? Period. Sugar daddy. He was getting the bag. Oh, yeah. The bag. Well, thank you too for tuning in to another unhinged episode of the 25 and over club. And we are going to drill. We are in this. We are like two months away from the live show. Yeah. So we are going to say this in every show. We're going to promote the live show very, very aggressively for these next couple of episodes leading up to the live show. So June 29th live at show. City Winery, the 25 and over club crew will be live after five. What time does the show start? At 7? 7. At 7 p.m., okay? So get your tickets. There will be the link in both of our bios. Come out and party with us. Come dance it up. We getting fucked up tonight. All right? Hope to see y'all there. See you on the next episode of the 25 and Over Club. Later. Over and out. Bye.